everybody, it's Lon Seibin and the folks from Brino lent us their Mac 200 security camera. This is very similar to their time-lapse camera that we looked at a few weeks ago, but it's kind of tuned in for uh, detecting things that happen in front of it. And it's got some decent low light sensitivity, but no night vision. So just be aware of that coming into it. It runs on two D batteries and the battery life is so efficient on this that it'll probably go for a couple of weeks before you need to swap the batteries out. So what's nice is that you can uh, set this up and if you're waiting for something to happen, uh, you can not have to really worry about going out and checking the batteries every morning because more than likely they'll still be fine. I've been using this off and on for the better part of a week now and I still haven't really uh, even scratched the surface. The battery indicator is still showing, I think it's still showing completely full at the moment. Uh, you have a little motion detector here that will detect motion events when something walks in front of the camera and you can have it do different things depending on how you have it configured. It comes with two mounting options. It's got a strap here for tying it around a tree or a post or something like that. It also has a little mounting bracket bracket that you can install somewhere and then it plugs into the tripod mount at the bottom. You can also use a padlock to secure the electronics from being open. So as you can see on the clamp here, um, you can put a, a lock right in there. Of course, you could probably force it open with if you really wanted to, but uh, it'll make it easier at least for or, or harder for, uh, you know, someone just looking for a quick uh, swipe of the memory card to get at it. So uh, inside it's uh, weatherproof. It's got a nice uh, gasket around the electronics here and this seals up really tight as well. You can hear that really just snap in. Uh, so I think it'll survive pretty well out in weather. Um, it runs on an SD card. What it does is it records to uh, AVI video files. And like the time-lapse camera we looked at before, what it'll do is uh, you can set it to record at an interval. So you could say capture a frame maybe every five or 10 seconds and uh, continually write to that uh, file all night. And what it'll do is either do that exclusively uh, or you can run it in a hybrid mode where it just does like a frame every five or 10 seconds. And then if it detects some motion events, it'll continually take pictures until uh, those motion events cease. You could also just have it run at in motion mode only so that it'll only turn itself on and record something if something crosses in front of the camera. So you have a couple of different modes there. All right, we're just going to briefly run through some of the features of the camera. Uh, right now it's set in hybrid mode and that means it's going to take a picture every 10 seconds regardless of what this sees, uh, but will also take more if something happens. Now one of the things that I noticed with it is that you see where it says weight PIR. Basically it's waiting on this sensor, I guess, to get heated up or calibrated or something. And what I found is that you have to wait a really long time for that weight PIR to go away and you can't really start the camera you know, recording or getting ready to record until that message goes away. So you kind of have to hang around and wait for that to, to happen. Uh, then you have to go back and hit the OK button uh, to begin the process of arming the camera for whatever it's going to do. So I'm just going to briefly step through a couple of the things that I, I found interesting within uh, the menu system. The first is the capture mode. So you can set it to uh, work in that hybrid mode where, again, it records uh, a time lapse video plus any motion events that occur. You can also have it just do motion. So it'll only record if something trips off that sensor. And then you can do a time lapse mode where it doesn't use the sensor at all and just records all the time. So we'll uh, switch it back uh, into hybrid. Um, you can also set it so that if, you know, again, the batteries on this last forever, <laughs> literally. So uh, the chances are you might over, over, you know, fill up your card over time. So uh, what it can do is erase the old files on the card uh, to make room for new ones. And that's helpful if you're waiting for something to happen that didn't happen. You don't have to keep going out and uh, erasing the card. It will basically erase the old files for you as time goes on. You can also set it to do a timer so that uh, it doesn't do anything perhaps during the day when there's people around. So maybe you set it to start uh, its recording function around 5 p.m. when everybody leaves and then uh, turns off at 8 a.m. when everyone comes back in. So you can have some flexibility there to not uh, waste battery or recording time. Uh, there's a playback rate here. I recommend always running this in 30 frames per second because that's what most video uh, systems like to play back at, at least uh, you know, YouTube uh, uh, for that matter likes to play back at that mode. Um, there's also image quality settings. If you've got a big card, I got a 32 gig card in here. I would just leave this at the best setting. Uh, you can have it uh, put a timestamp on there. You can also disable the uh, little LED light here that blinks when the motion detector is sensing something happening. So let's take a look at some image samples. And I uh, left this out in the yard overnight. And as you can see, when the sun went down and it got really dark out, it saw nothing. <laughs> it was totally dark. Uh, but as the sun came up, obviously it started seeing more. The problem though is that the colors are completely off. And I'm told that's because uh, they've tuned the camera to be very sensitive in low light conditions where it has a little bit of ambient light to work with. It'll see something, but it doesn't have night vision. So there's no way for it to really see anything in complete darkness. A lot of the other cameras I've looked at, security cameras that I've looked at, 
um, have those little infrared uh, flashlights on them that nobody can see, but at least it can illuminate for a night vision sensor. And again, this is not a night vision camera. What I did do, though, is I tested the darkest spot in my house during the day, which is where my closet where my dog was resting, and I uh, closed all the doors up, left a little bit of ambient light coming in. As you can see, um, it actually took a pretty decent image. The closet, to, your, to my eyes, looks a lot darker than the image sample that came out of here. So um, I think if you've got like a porch light on or something in the area that you're monitoring, it'll work pretty well. I think where this camera can be useful is, you know, if you have a, a few areas that you might want to take a closer look at for an extended period of time, you can kind of set it up out there, leave it, not really have to check on it all that often. You don't have to run wires to get the camera hooked up. Uh, and it's really nice that the batteries on this last as long as it does. I haven't really seen, uh, even like those game cameras just don't seem to last as long as uh, this one does. If it had night vision, it would be an awesome security camera. I hope that they uh, make one in the future that does because without the night vision capability, it's, uh, it's not going to be as useful, especially for security environments. But that is the Brino Mac 200. And this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.